Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. Today we're going to be talking about House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. I wish I had a physical copy of this book because it's so pretty and I loved it and I need a copy of it. But I unfortunately don't. I read this as an ebook from my library. I like asked them to pre-order it through. So I think I was the first person at my library to read this, which is not exciting at all. But when I saw this book a month or two before it came out on Goodreads, I was obsessed and not just because of the pretty cover. It's been about a month since I read this book, maybe almost two months by the time this video is out, and I still don't have a clue what I read, but it was wonderful. So, <laughs> on New Year's Day 10 years ago, on a quiet street in Edinburgh, three young hollow sisters disappear without a trace as their parents turn away for a midnight kiss. One month later, they suddenly reappear on the same street they were taken from with no proof that they've gone besides an antique hunting knife and matching half-moon scars at the base of their throats. The sisters apparently have no memory of their abduction, but their hair turns white and their eyes change to black, and they now have the ability to make anyone fall under their spell. Literally. <laughs> their father is convinced that these three suddenly strange girls are not his daughters, but their overprotective mother refuses to acknowledge that anything is wrong. I think that's as much as I can say about the plot and the backstory before I start getting into the main plot and spoilers. If you read the description of this book on Goodreads, it does, I was going to say very nicely um, summarise what this book's about, but I think even the, pl the blurb goes into spoilers. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this, the blurb was a bit too descriptive for my tastes. So there are so many things that I loved about this book. Sullivan's writing is beautiful, something which I had doubts about before I started reading as I had a mixed experience with one of her previous novels. I've just spotted it here. It's um, Our Chemical Hearts and I watched the film for it the other day and I couldn't tell based off the film if the film was just a bad adaptation or if the source material wasn't great. And at the time when I first read this, this I did love it, but I was a lot younger. This was like the Fault in Our Stars era. It was all the bright places. It's on the top shelf, you can't quite see it. Era. It was that era. It was the peak me being in love with depressing, maybe slightly romanticizing depression books. So yeah, I had a kind of mixed experience with that novel, especially now looking back at it. House of Hollow has an incredibly fairy tale esque rhythm that makes the story very alluring and atmospheric and exquisite and eerie. There's some beautiful descriptions of character appearances, the clothes that the elder sister Grey designs, and the environments that they explore. One of these environments I wish they spent longer in, just to fully develop it. I'll come back to this point later on. But yeah, I was drawn in from the first page and also the front, the front cover, the front cover very much. I think the thing that I love the most about the writing is that it doesn't shy away from showing the ugly side and the rotting interior beneath all this beauty on the outside. The story is very plot driven. I didn't mean to say that negatively. That's meant to be just a neutral statement. It's very plot driven and it's so extremely complex and intricate and strange that I'm impressed it worked. However, I think in some places the plot was very um, over powering. I personally did not feel fully connected to all the characters or even the three sisters but I think I think maybe I'm saying this you know the same way that English teachers do the very they go into too much depth about what the curtains with blue means that's what I'm doing now. I think in some ways having you not connect with the characters could be an intentional choice to add to this very unnerving mystery that surrounds the sisters but also it could just be I didn't connect with the characters, you know? But I, in some ways that disconnection does help with the mystery. So like, in, it's a win-lose, I guess. Maybe a win-win, I, I don't know. So I think I'll go into a little breakdown of the sisters as they are um, the most important characters for both the story and the plot and the backstory and everything. They are the most important people here. Grey is the eldest sister and in my opinion she is the most fascinating character. I'm a little bit in love with her. She kind of scares me a bit. <laughs> um, she describes herself as the thing in the dark. 
and is a sister who has used these like, newfound powers of getting people to do what you want to her benefit. She is the rich, famous celebrity fashion designer model sister. And she kind of uses this um, mystery of her past to add to her public persona. It makes her more beautiful and dangerous and like, I guess, I was going to say in the way that the Olsen twins are, because you don't know anything about them and they're mysterious, but like, this is different. <laughs> she very much uses this, for what, her, to what it is to her sisters, it's trauma to them, but to her, it somehow made her stronger and powerful. In another universe, I think she would be a very exciting villain. Vivi is the sister that I felt less, well, yeah, she's definitely the sister I felt least connected to. And she's a sister that I think um, could be removed from the story and it wouldn't change the plot too much. I think most of her traits boil down to her being like the edgy rock star sister. Um, Grey left home when she was young, Vivi followed her a couple months later. And whereas Grey went on to become a famous rich celebrity, Vivi went down like the edgy rock star, sleeping on sofas, travelling Europe kind of route. And as much as I don't really care for or remember her character, there is a line about her that's one of my favourite lines in the book. It says that she caught a midnight megabus to Paris, dot dot dot, collecting tattoos and piercings and languages and lovers along the way. And I just love the flow of that line. And once again, I'm glowing. So to me, she was kind of more interesting when she was off the page. I was more interested in her backstory and her life rather than what was happening to her in the moment. But she did provide some moments of lightness, not quite comic relief, but definitely lightness in such a dark story. And Iris is the youngest sister and she's our narrator. She's a sister that's had the least exciting life compared to the other two, as they are off being famous and exciting. But she stayed at home and she's in school and she's being bullied because everyone thinks her sisters are witches because what happens to them as children and how they're all really creepy looking now. But she's busy being like the, per the perfect daughter for her mother to make up for the other two. And a lot of her personality is revolving around idolising her sisters and I guess wanting their freedom. And that is a theme in this story. But yeah, she's the one, even though she's on the radar, I have the least to say about but I, she did have a very like, captivating voice that I did like. Overall, House of Holly was a very exciting read that somehow had me hanging on to every word, somehow combining a missing person story and subversive fairy tales and horror elements that did genuinely keep me up at night. I'm so in awe of this book, and I would love it if Sutherland returned to this genre in the future. I would also not object if she decided to rewrite this book from the day the sisters disappeared to present day through Grey's perspective because Grey is the most interesting character and she knows a lot more than we know until near the end of the book. And there's genuinely so much I want to say about this book but I'm trying to keep this review as spoiler free as possible but there's so much I want to say. I think my other my like one downfall of this book is that I wanted them to explore this one specific landscape a bit longer and they also wanted um, us to explore the things in Grey's head a bit more but as she was not the, the narrator of this book we could not do that. I gave this book a 5 star rating on Goodreads, I'd probably make it more of like a 4.5 because I do have some flaws with I wanted to spend more time in places but overall this was um, an incredible book and I look forward to whatever Sutherland writes in the future. So thank you for watching this video, I'm aware it's not a very critical or good review, it's just me talking about things I liked, but as I said there's so much more I want to say but spoilers. But thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye!